Hey guys, Ivan here and how about we move from all this controversy and drama and focus on the real bodybuilding. What the hell is going on in the real bodybuilding world? And I have so many things to cover today. I'm gonna try to be brief with all of them so you don't watch an hour long video. And let's go with the first one as you can see right here. This is Luke Sando and he's practicing posing with no one else but the mind Milo Sharchev who happens to be from Serbia where I'm from actually. And this pose right here is the pose that Luke actually needs help with. If he could perfect abs and thighs, he could be a very good bodybuilder, he could place higher. Because you guys know, abs and thighs is the back double bicep of modern bodybuilding of today. As you can see right here, Luke is very thick. That's his game. That's what he's known for, being very thick. And that comes with strength, because he trains very, very heavy, so he got very thick. And he's very complete also. I mean, look at his back very thick back everything is there every single muscle is where it should be now the question is not is he going to be complete and muscular but the question is actually is he going to be shredded enough because look at his glutes right here they do not look peeled mm, not even close but earlier this year at Arnold Classic Boston Lloyd was the one who was saying that Luke is going to have soggy glutes that he's not gonna be lean enough which was not true Luke brought an amazing conditioning and placed third at such a big show so if he actually pulls that once again, if he actually comes dry and shredded at this Tampa Pro, he will have a very big chance to win the show. Because he's complete, he's big as a house, and uh, he's young, he's fresh. Unlike Dexter, Dexter is old, I mean he's 50, almost 50 this year. But you know, Dexter is Dexter. He's one of the most gifted bodybuilders genetically of all time. He's not as big as some of them, like Ronnie Coleman, for example, and also not like Luke. But he has those crazy bellies, crazy shape. So that's Dexter. I mean, I just want to say once again, Dexter is Dexter. But he is getting older and he's not fresh as he was once. So Luke is a younger guy who is very hungry and who is looking very good. So it's going to be an epic battle, I'm sure of that. Here you can see Luke training, and uh, one thing he's also known for, as I already said, being very strong. And that shows on his physique. It shows in terms of thickness. He's very, very thick, and I cannot stress that enough. Because you have a lot of bodybuilders who don't train heavy and with compound movements, and they look good, but when they turn on the side, you can see that they are not very thick. And uh, Luke, when he turns on the side, basically you can see his back. <laughs> because he's very, very big, very, very huge. And that is also the reason why Dorian Yates was able to dominate during the 90s against the guys with better genetics, because he was thicker from the sides, which in comparison shows that he's much bigger than the rest of the lineup. And that's what I like to see. I like to see some crazy-ass thickness, don't you? While we're speaking about thickness and open-class bodybuilders, we must mention William Bonac with his most recent physique update. And these guys' arms are probably the same size if you measure them sideways and upwards, pretty much. Literally, I mean, measure it from the elbow up and from his triceps to his biceps. Probably the same size. <laughs> uh, not really, but his arms are humongous, really big arms. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is Intel. I don't think this can be real muscle. I don't think your biceps can be popping this much without even flexing them, basically. But anyways, he's looking great. And I'm really curious... Is he going to be ready? Is he going to be shredded enough? And will he peak perfectly without Neil Hill in his corner? Will he get another coach? Or will he try to implement the same formula that Neil gave him? Because if you watch the Nick Strength and Powers video, uh, the interview with Neil Hill, he said that he actually gave him an updated program for 2019 Mr. Olympia. So he has the program. He just doesn't have somebody to follow him, you know, to make sure that he's sticking to it. But he does have it. So if he sticks to it and if he does everything perfectly without a necessity to change things, if everything goes well, if he sticks to his plan and if everything goes perfect, he will be top 3 at least and maybe even win 2019 Mr. Olympia. It's very, very possible. Anybody can win it, especially the guys from the top 3. This thing right here shows his biceps. He's just sitting right there. He's not even flexing. He's just relaxed and his biceps are popping, they're bulging, they're actually hitting his chest. He is barely able to, to put them down. And this does not happen with uh, real muscle. This is definitely some side enhancement oil. But who cares? It looks good, it looks hard. It doesn't look oily. It looks firm and uh, it looks like real muscle, but it's definitely not. No way. No way. He's not 
an alien. This is just a human. You don't look like this. You cannot get this kind of biceps naturally. I mean, without putting something other than real muscle uh, in those arms. So I'm pretty sure this is simple. Anyways, it's not important. The important is that he's placing well and that he doesn't show an obvious simple is because you don't see any kind of smoothness and oily type of muscle. It's hard, it's firm, and that's all that matters. But let's go back to Tampa Pro, and uh, Charles Griffin is one of the contenders as well. So he uploaded this photo right here, and he says, Don't sleep on me. Now, the thing with Charles is, he has some very, very impressive body parts and impressive poses. For example, this one. Or this one. His back lat spread is really good. But he does have some weaknesses. For example, his quads are not great. And one more thing, which is very, very important today. Yeah, that's his stomach. His stomach is off. It's not good. It's not good. I mean, especially this pose. This pose is a disaster for him. I mean, his quads, first of all, don't have any details in the inner part. And also the outer sweep is not very good. So his quads are his biggest problem. Um, actually, after abs, after his stomach. His stomach is a complete disaster. So I don't think this guy has a chance to win the Tampa. No way. But he has the chance to be in the top 3 or top 4, we'll see what happens, but he's a great bodybuilder though, great one, yeah. Now without Phil and without Sean, the best looking bodybuilder in the world right now for me is Harry Chopin. Because he's complete and he has that perfect, perfectly peaked conditioning. Um, without Phil Heat that is on, without Phil Heat that is good like in 2017 for example, 2018 version of Phil Heat is not more impressive than version of Hadi that won Vancouver Pro. I find this more impressive. I'm sure he would look smaller compared to Rowley and uh, also Brandon Curry, but these guys are not complete as Hadi. For example, Brandon Curry doesn't have as good legs and Rowley Winkler doesn't have as good back. So for that reason, I would say Hadi Chopin is my favorite bodybuilder of today. The best physique. I would say so. I'm gonna make a separate video about this. So stay tuned guys, subscribe. Anyways, I'm curious how will he do at the Mr. Olympia and I don't think he will compete in 212. He's qualified for the Open and he has a legitimate chance to win the thing, to become the Mr. Olympia. And I would love to see that happening actually. I mean, he looks very, very good. He looks freaking impressive. I was amazed with his physique. I was really mind blown, mind blown. It was something that was needed in bodybuilding. Really, it was needed. It really motivated me, it gave me hope. I was really thinking, what is going on with physiques today? Nobody is looking perfect. Like Phil Heath 2017, that was good. Kai Green 2014, that was awesome. 2010, Jay Cutler. Dexter Jackson 2008, and so on. We had much better physiques. Today we have a bunch of physiques and they are not complete, they are not perfectly shredded, perfectly peaked. And we had that with Hadi Chopin. I think he has a very good chance to win the Mr. Olympia. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, I'm really rooting for him to bring even better package. But hey, enough talk about the big guys, the open guys. Let's go to classic physique and let's transition to the classic physique by looking at somebody who transitioned from classic physique to open and is going back to classic as well. So that's Henry Pierre Anno. And um, also we're going to talk about the other weekend warriors, right? About classic physique guys. But uh, Henry Pierre Anno this weekend actually at Portugal Pro competed as an open class bodybuilder and he actually took sixth place sixth place which is very very good as you can see right here his back shots are very very good i like his back very much and from the front as well i mean he was battling uh, samson dauda for that fifth place he did not win it because yeah samson is thicker he's bigger but uh, actually you could make an argument that henry actually deserved to win being more aesthetic having probably smaller waist shorter torso as you can see Samson has a little bit longer torso and so on there are many traits that Henry possesses and uh, he could have won actually fifth place but he didn't anyways this is a great placement for somebody who is doing classic and actually right now he said that he is actually transferring back to classic so we're gonna see him at the Mr. Olympia right now he's prepping for Mr. Olympia classic physique last year he was fourth place we'll see how he does this year if he actually manages to <laughs> be at the weight limit, which is going to be hard for him probably because he got bigger for this show. Anyways, I'm looking forward to Classic Physique Mr. Olympia, but uh, somebody is also making improvements while we speak. As you can see, Stanimal is training with Charles. 
And Charles Glass, one of the most, uh, probably the most popular bodybuilding trainer in the world, is training him. And Charles is known for his angles. So maybe I'm wrong about Charles because he trains Stanimal this year. And look at the gains that Stanimal was able to make. And look at the, the upper chest. Look at the upper chest. He is much improved. He's definitely much improved. And I'm sure he's going to be better as far as placings as well. If he peaks perfectly, so that's on Chris Asito. Last year, he was a bit flat. He was definitely flat, and that's why he didn't place as well. But this year, he made really good improvements. And I'm sure the reason for that is his training. He's training with Charles, but he's definitely training hard. This guy is not fooling around. This guy is training as hard as he can. So as you can see, <laughs> these veins on his shoulders and upper chest do not look very classic. But uh, as far as his size, he is yeah, for classic. But I'm sure he's going to transfer to open eventually if he manages to pack on some more weight but as you can see right here he is much bigger on the right side on the right photo he is uh, actually two pounds heavier but actually leaner than he was last year at, at the same time so he's gonna be more defined more shredded and bigger I'm looking forward to seeing that because this guy has an amazing personality very good very good guy you know very nice guy he replies to everybody he always is polite always is laughing very, very nice guy, and uh, also very good physique, very classic physique. But did you forget about this guy, Kurejo Para? He took third at the Arnold Classic, placing behind uh, Steve Lorias and uh, George Peterson. And this year, Keon is probably gonna beat him, but I'm not really sure at this point. You can see that this guy made some improvements as well. He looks very full. He has very good shape, very good muscle values. He's known for his legs. But I don't know if he is even qualified for this year's Mr. Olympia. I don't know. I don't think so. If you guys know, tell me down below in the comment section. But I'm pretty sure he's not. Maybe he's just making improvements for next year. We'll see. So we talked about the big guys. We talked about the small guys. Now let's talk about the medium guys. 212 division. And without Hari Chopin competing, I'm pretty sure Hari will not compete. I'm not sure if Hari gonna even get the visa to show up in USA. But I'm pretty sure if he gets the visa, he will not compete in 212. Why would he? And the favorite to win it is this guy, last year runner-up, Derek Langsford. And as you can see, I think he made some improvements. I think he looks bigger, fuller and rounder and uh, overall improved. I think his muscle quality is getting better. But K, okay, you know, he is known for uh, looking impressive as hell in the offseason. But when it comes to competition day, he is not as impressive, but still good enough to take second place. As you can see right here, this is him guest posing. And he looks like a Mr. Olympia in open class. He looks huge. But yeah, you guys know he's super short. Anyways, he looks much, much bigger than any 212 competitor. He looks enormous. But when it comes to competition time, this is basically what you get. This is 212 pound bodybuilder. And as you can see, everything is good. His legs are good. His arms are fine. But can you see that area, that blurry area of his upper chest and shoulders? He's very, very smooth through that area, and that's what is hurting him the most. That part right there. Everything else is good. For example, his back. He has world-class back. Very good back. Overall, back poses. And uh, I would just say this is the Mr. Olympia 2019 in 212 category. Unless Shari shows up somehow in 212 and, uh, of course, wins it. I mean, that would be easy win for Hari. But I think Hari will not show up. I think this guy is the favorite to win it. I don't think anybody can actually reach him. So this is it for this video, guys. We talked about everything that happened these past days. And this, is, this was a lot of topics. So thank you for sticking till the end of this video. And guys, thank you so much for all the kind words, all the support and everything. And once again, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. You're not going to be sorry for that. I'm uploading videos very, very frequently and you don't want to miss any of those. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, once again, subscribe. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.